Hi, it's Dave. Today I'm joined by Chicken Genius Singapore. Welcome to the show. Yeah, hi, Dave. Uh, great to have to be on your show again. It's, yeah. it's been really good talking to you and looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's an honor to be here with you. Um, the topic of discussion today, and I want to thank you, Ken, for joining and just being having an open mind, is whether or not, or I, I guess the pros and cons of a holding company, let's call it X, that could potentially hold Tesla, SpaceX, Boring Company, and Neuralink. And we've had um, some discussions on Twitter and YouTube in the community around this topic. And it's been fascinating <laughs> because it's such a divisive, controversial topic. I'm like uh, blown away. Um, I don't think I've ever received this much pushback um, from people, um, even more so than my Bitcoin videos. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I thought it'd be a fun time to um, kind of look at things from different angles and kind of hear your perspective, but also we could kind of work out some issues. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe there'll be some issues we don't see eye to eye, but maybe there will be some issues that we do agree with. And so maybe we'll learn some stuff and, and others, you know, can also kind of pitch in in the comments um, and on Twitter as well. Sure, I think great. Uh, such conversations always create, uh, I mean, we, we learn something from each other, especially, I mean, I don't mean to change topic, but going back to when you were talking to uh, Yasin, I, 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 uh, from mm -hmm. Bitcoin, I learned a lot from there. So I think conversations like this really helps the public. And so let's see, you know, where where this brings us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely agree. Um, yeah. So yeah, I wanted to, to ask you, because I noticed with your last video, um, you had a very strong stance against the idea of a holding company to hold Tesla, SpaceX, et cetera. And yes. you were, you know, kind of saying you think that stock would tank, um, innovation would, would be stifled, there wouldn't be any more exponential growth. Could you kind of share a bit more on your reasonings, kind of on your thinking on how you see, you know, those risks? Um just now regarding the innovation side, I am certain that it may not stifle, but probably like, uh, you know, company cultures, you know, when you're from different cultures of different companies and sudden merger, usually it's not a good thing. I, I've been part of a merger before. Um, usually a company has one, I mean, they have a way of thinking and they usually at the end of it, they don't really see eye to eye and you see splits happen. So I'm not really a big fan of the merger, but having... Elon leading this, I'm, I'm quite sure the innovation culture will still continue. Maybe the employees will not be as happy, but I think it's all good. Uh, I think my biggest concern lies in this whole setup, and I also have a better solution for that. But um, my biggest concern is I do know that a lot of people put their life savings into Tesla. I, I do know that for sure. I mean, I'm fine losing 50% if Tesla drops now. I'm fine with it. I'm a Elon fanboy, I admit it, I invest in him, I don't really care what happens. But uh, at when you, you do such a uh, merger, and I did see your tweet, you, you were ex actually explaining that excluding uh, evaluations, it may be good for Elon. So uh, a merger like that, I feel that it will uh, stifle the exponential growth of stock price. So uh, I, I see individual companies stock price like flying like mad all the time, but I really do not see a holding company doing that because there's a lot of small, like uh, like mentioned, like Elon always mentions, you know, when you need to scale a company, uh, it's really difficult. So Neuralink is still far from there. Uh, SpaceX is still far. I mean, you're talking about Starlink. They still cannot scale that amount of satellites yet. You, you think about it, they need to launch like once a week to hit their target. And it, it's really difficult to scale there. So. Um, for me, when I invested in Tesla, it's because they started to scale. And retail investors, most of them, they invest because they believe in something, but they do not, they actually forget sometimes the risk of not being able to scale. So I'm just coming from a place where I do not want to see uh, retail investors' money get destroyed. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, I, if there's a better way, I would prefer to have an alternate method. Yeah, but coming back to your 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 tweet, I mean, uh, in your opinion, how does I mean how does this help like the retail investors and Elon? I, I don't know where do you strike that balance. Yeah, I I I I look at it as um so a few things. I I I totally get what you're saying about scaling. Um because businesses they need to be in a sense ripe or ready to scale. Um 
to get oftentimes the valuation you know the market can give. Um, I think one thing with SpaceX that's often misunderstood is that Starlink actually is right at the point of scaling right now, and the next one to two years it's going to be amazing for Starlink. So. Uh, Starlink already has about a thousand satellites up, and they only need about fourteen hundred and forty satellites to get worldwide coverage. It won't be perfect coverage, but it'll be a good initial coverage. So they're just probably about three or four months away from being able to have worldwide like amazing coverage. And then this is a subscription business that is like just recurring revenue. It's one of the best business models. Around and yeah. so in the next two or three years, we're gonna see a huge like revenue spike with Starlink. And when I look at the numbers, because this is such, you can get maybe between five hundred dollars to twelve hundred dollars per year per customer. You know, and the margins are extremely high with this business. <clears throat> If you work out projections like ten years going forward, like I really see Starlink being worth. Probably like one trillion dollars in market cap, and I, personally, like I don't think people understand. Like I think Elon isn't like hyping up Starlink at all because he doesn't need to. It's a private company. Um, but in the private markets right now, SpaceX has a valuation of between fifty and sixty billion dollars. But if they go public, I think they would get at least a hundred fifty billion dollar. Uh, market cap valuation, and I think in two years, SpaceX, including Starlink, because they own all of it,、um, SpaceX will be valued between probably two hundred and fifty billion or more with Starlink. So、mm -hmm. we're right at that point where Starlink is becoming probably a trillion dollar company, and SpaceX gets to own all of that for the time being. And so、yes. the way I look at it in terms of why it's possibly good for for shareholders is. You probably won't be able to get this type of, I guess, discount on SpaceX and Starlink in the future.、Um, mm -hmm. It's extremely undervalued right now. And so, once let's say Starlink goes public, you get far market, fair market cap valuation. It's going to be a completely different story.、And、the other thing is Neuralink is extremely undervalued in my opinion. Sure, it's years off from being able to scale, but. The potential of Elon, let's say he's a proven entrepreneur with PayPal and SpaceX and Tesla and you know all these companies, and the problem that Neuralink is solving is actually the biggest problem in a sense, the biggest market potential.、Um, it's bigger than Tesla. It's bigger than SpaceX, and so there's a a large probability that Neuralink can be bigger than Tesla and SpaceX. In twenty or thirty years, Neuralink could actually be bigger than SpaceX and Tesla combined. Actually, in twenty or thirty years, like it's that big of a market. I agree. Yeah, and in that sense, if 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 you also think about it, Tesla in ten years, let's say it reaches a market cap of three to six trillion dollars or so, and Elon Musk is no longer CEO. Let's say he's no longer chairman. Even in that case, it's extremely difficult for Tesla to do another. Five x from there, you know, it's like in ten years. Yes, like the company、yes. is like gonna,、yes. it all the everything is working against Tesla at a certain higher valuation, and that's where you need, I think, a few things. You need other op big opportunities. So, like for example, Neuralink gives twenty or thirty years of of potential. SpaceX and Starlink give another twenty or thirty years of potential, and so if you combine these three companies, what you have is you have massive growth growth over the next ten years with Tesla. And then after ten years, it's starting. It's going to get a little more difficult. I'm not going to say Tesla's not going to grow, but it could double in five or ten years. But it's not going to be fast growing. But then you have the next generation of companies with SpaceX and, and Starlink, and then with Neuralink another decade after. So you have ten years of Tesla, ten years of of Starlink, and ten years of Neuralink, and you're going to have thirty years of perhaps the fastest growing companies in history. Of the world,、yes. all pulled together,、yes. and so for a long-term investor, if you just invest only in that for thirty years,、mm -hmm. you're going to have an amazing gain. It's going to be far greater than just Tesla, you know. And I think definitely, I、mm, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, I, I I do agree on on this this point where the next ten years going to be amazing for maybe SpaceX. Or、uh, I mean, each company will take its stage. It, it's, it's a bright moment. I think Tesla has just begin that stage. 
um, I love your this idea, but this idea would probably happen maybe 10 years down the road. I'm 100% for this idea. Not now. I mean, um, Tesla has just started. You know, their revenue is, is still not really that high compared to the... I mean, if you're looking at the Elon CEO reward trenches, he probably meet all the market cap revenue, but he has not meet the, the EBITDA, the revenue coming in yet. So regarding that, uh, for me, 10 years down the road, yes, consolidation, but I have an alternative proposal because I think Elon replied to your tweet again regarding his biggest headache, his biggest headache is engineering, his design, um, company operations or something like that. I see it as capital uh, raising for Elon Musk. Now it's easy. He asked for money. Anybody's going to throw money at him, no matter what. Uh, he's going to be the best capital raiser in the world. But I do not see an issue with it. So a holding company in, in that kind of sense doesn't really make sense to raise capital. Instead, this is, uh, for me, this is what I'll propose. Uh, there's actually a role inside uh, that he can do, but I'm not too sure if he's willing to, to step down on that role. The CEO is actually not the biggest person in the company. And uh, if you understand the structure of businesses, the board of directors, and there's a chairman of the board of directors, and they actually could fire the CEO anytime. So having said that, I think if Elon becomes a chairman, uh, he doesn't need to care about company operations. And uh, uh, let me just emphasize a little bit on this. There was an interview with you know the Lemonade C C CTO, Shai, or something like that. I think I could send you a link after this video. It was like a two hours talk or one hour talk. I can't remember. But he talks about him being, why not him being a CEO? And he went, all right, no. Uh, he, uh, he, he has started enough companies to understand that you cannot do a role and you've got to be good at what you do. With. So he's good at engineering and he's going to do that AI part and stuff. And coming back to, coming back to Elon, uh, CEO role could be passed to anybody else. And he could actually take that playbook from his good friend, Larry uh, Edison. You see uh, how Oracle is run. He's the chairman. He's not the CEO. And there's nobody in wherever... Elon could be a uh, normal staff at the production line of Tesla. Nobody's going to replace his, um, his what he ever done. And no matter what, he will always have a say in the company, no matter where he is. So the probably the only thing that if Elon could do, I'm not too sure he could do it now, is to you know, remove his role as a CEO, uh, probably become chairman uh, of Tesla. Uh, or Other companies, I don't care, just become chairman or board, board directors or anything, just to remove his role so he can concentrate on serving, I mean, doing what he do best in engineering and stuff. Let the CEO do their job. Uh, and if... I mean, if that's the case, I think that frees him up a lot for a lot of other things he can do. And I'm pretty sure as a chairman of the board, he can propose something and the CEO will just say yes, you know, uh, because it's Elon. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, actually, I was thinking, I was talking to my wife about that, this idea because Elon Musk in his uh, in compensation, 2018 compensation plan, he has um, kind of, it's three parts. One is he could be CEO right? Or he could be chief product officer and chairman of the board and still qualify for all of the compensation. And then the third option is he just leaves, he could leave the company after the, he meets all of the, the tranches, right? And so I was yes. thinking about this idea of Elon Musk as chairman. And I remember with Solar City, he was chairman of the board. He was the largest investor. Um, and I think he held more in Solar City percent wise than Tesla. And I noticed when I was watching, because I was an investor in Solar City as well, and I was I was following them every quarter. What I noticed was Elon had a very tough time with Solar City in the sense that even though he was chairman of the board, he couldn't really get involved in the company too much. Because even though he was chairman and top shareholder, like the CEO was running the show and would report to him and Elon would just say, okay, okay, good job, good job, good job, good job. But he couldn't go into engineering teams and say, hey, let's work on this product or really give like, you know, concrete standards of, hey, we need to change this or do this because the CEO was running the job and he felt like as a chairman, like he, it's more of an overseeing, kind of an outsider stance, right? And so he would go to these board meetings and just say, okay, that's good, that's good. And what ended up happening was when Solar City got into a big problem, 
with with liquidity, he's like, the only way I can fix this is I need to bring them in, you know, and I need to yes, run yes. run the show, right, to fix this. Yes. And what yes. I think with Tesla is once Elon, if he steps out of CEO, and let's say he becomes just chairman, or he could do product officer too, chief product, but let's say far into the future, and I want to ask, I want to talk about when that might be, but sure. if he's just chairman, like, I think the thing is a chairman can't fire a CEO by himself. It has to be the whole board, actually. So he doesn't have yes. that. He can't really just jump into meetings or it's a CEO has that authority, right? It, he, he's more of an outsider as a chairman that he has to work together with these board of directors. So it's like a, it's not a direct role that Elon, I think, thrives the best in. Elon thrives the best. Like, for example, when Starlink was having a tough problem in uh, 2017 or so, they were delayed mm -hmm. and with all sorts of excuses. Elon flew, he literally took a plane, took his best SpaceX managers, he went up to mm -hmm. Seattle, and in one meeting, he says, all of the management is in Starlink is fired right now, and I'm replacing all of you guys with my own, with these other people here. And we're gonna you know, launch our first you know, satellite immediately within you know, several months. That is something a chairman can't do. You know, chairman has to have all yes. these meetings with the board and they're not going to understand. And, and it's just, Elon is the best at kind of forcing innovation because he has willpower where he says, this has to happen and we're going to make it happen or else I'm going to fire you and find someone else to make it happen. Right. And that yes. role only works, I believe, in a CEO role. Like, and if he loses mm -hmm. the CEO role and he steps down, let's say he just focuses on engineering design even like i think he can contribute with the product but the big missing part is strategy like you don't have the elon huge ambition and strategic kind of ambition so i was thinking about this idea without elon as ceo do you think like battery day would be the same do you think they could have had the same type of innovations and without if elon wasn't ceo for the past few years do you think autonomy day they could have like announce the same thing or not. Yes. And so I, like in my opinion, with if Elon wasn't CEO, battery day and autonomy is not happening. No way, 0% in my yes. opinion, because no other CEO could think that strategically. And if I, you put, I, I, oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I 100% agree with you. So for Tesla, he, he needs to remain as a CEO, um, especially for the little while before the, Finish at least at least they finish full self driving. So that's the part where you need to remain as CEO. So uh, regarding uh, I actually I got two points to bring across regarding control of his company. So uh, if you are looking at two very successful second persons in Elon's life, okay, you you don't get these kind of people very often. Like I I like to I like Glenn Shotwell. She is one of the most one of the best second person Elon has ever had in terms of uh, of operating SpaceX. Uh, so Glenn Shotwell is amazing. Uh, the second person is uh, actually is Cheryl's, uh, the Mark's, uh, Facebook's uh, second person, uh, Cheryl Sandberg, is it? I can't remember her name. Yeah. Uh, suddenly yeah, I can't customer. remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like one of the best second person ever for Mark. So Elon needs these kind of people. With these kind of people at the helm, they are able, he's able to let it go. And uh, that's why Elon, he is still the chief engineer for SpaceX because Glenn Shotwell is doing an amazing job. So he needs to find the second uh, Glenn Shotwell. So for now, I will 100% agree with you if the holding company, uh, Tesla goes to the holding company 10 years from now, that's fine. That, that, that works for me. So the second op option is to have like what you say, now to have set up a holding company, but this holding company is for uh, SpaceX, you know, uh, Neuralink, Boring Company and all these. Uh, to me, it's a perfect plan now. And... Uh, what, what happens with this company, You Elon doesn't need to be the CEO. Again, he could be the chief engineer or, of this. Uh, okay, so the holding company, okay, so there's a holding company that holds many small companies. I'm going to give you an example on a past experience I had. Uh, I remember this company I like to invest in called Precision Counterparts. I'm not too sure you remember this company. In the US, it's one of the perfect company, perfect balance sheet. Uh, they do aeroplane parts. And mm -hmm. Warren Buffett, I, I mean, when I bought that company, I'm like, oh, yes, I bought a good company. And Warren Buffett came in and swiped the whole company away. 
the good part about being under a holding company, these CEO, these CEOs, they have a pretty easy time. They are like relaxed and they they don't need to answer to public anymore. So they answer to the holding company itself. So we could set up a structure like that for Elon, like all these companies that he has under the main holding company. He could be CEO of all these companies and he doesn't need to answer to the public anymore. So I would rather have that kind of structure now. Um, and if he needs capital, you just spin off the company and a lot of money is going to come in from the holding company. So probably that is a, a kind of solution I would prefer for Elon. I mean, can, you can purely see that he's really like having headache now uh, managing operations. Um, so that might be one of the methods mm -hmm. that he could do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think like one note on, on SpaceX, actually like Gwen Shotwell, she's president and COO, but it's mm -hmm. kind of like Elon actually is, is CEO still. And the reason why they, oh. yeah, the reason why they call her president is because she needs the title to interact with government contracts and, you know, big other companies. So she, to call, to have the president title helps her to, to land sales contracts. And the same thing happens with uh, Jerome Kean of Tesla. They call him president of automotive mm -hmm. because he has to deal with all of the supply chain. So he, to call him president really helps him out. But with SpaceX, Elon is CEO. He calls all of the shots. Like Gwyn is mo mostly handling the sales and the, logistics yes. but but yes. elon he sets the goals he sets the strategies he sets you know kind of the whole strategic vision and in my opinion that's where elon like thrives the best like with control and if he steps down as ceo and someone else is ceo i, I personally don't think it works very long like a couple years and there's too much conflict like elon is he's he's not meant to work under a person you know um and so I don't know. Um, I, I wanted to ask your opinion on this. When I look at the 2008 CEO compensation plan, it, it seems like almost all of the market cap trenches are almost fulfilled, right? So there's 12 trenches up until $650 billion. Yes. And then there's uh, 16 operational milestones that Elon just needs to meet 12 of them. And yes. then when I look at them, they're kind of pretty low numbers, you know, like they're not too high in my opinion. Like, if they, if Elon actually meets seventy five billion dollars in revenue and a fourteen billion dollar EBITDA um, uh, adjusted you know profit, um, then he could actually qualify for all twelve. So when I work out the numbers, I think that could be done within three years. So I think in three years he could actually qualify for all of his CEO compensation plan, and after that, mm -hmm. there's no financial motivation in terms of stock options for him to stay yes. as CEO yes. or product officer or anything, right? And so when I look at that, I can imagine him possibly over the next few years start to think about, you know, stepping down or, or leaving Tesla. It depends on how much a headache Tesla is over the next few years. But <laughs> the sense I get yeah. is once Tesla kind of this past year reached a certain point and it's, mm -hmm. It, the valuation went so high, it kind of felt like that everyone was cheering that on. Everyone was like, yeah, this is great, this is great. But in my head, I put myself a little bit, when I think about Elon Musk's position, the higher Tesla stock price goes up, he actually, I think, loses some motivation and urgency because he's like, okay, Tesla will do okay. I can work on other projects, other things, right? And I so see. I think the the if Tesla stays up here in valuation and we see the revenue growth, et cetera, within three years or so, you know, Elon might fulfill all of his, you know, go his stock option goals. And if it's kind of a lot of burden for him, like, I don't know why he would stick around. He might stay around as chairman of the board. Um, yes. But that's my concern. And what do you think if, if Elon steps down as, as, and leaves the company as CEO, and it's just chairman, do you, are you as excited about Tesla like next 10 years after that or not? Does it make a difference for you? I'm curious. Um, I, I guess I, I, I actually totally get you on when he finishes all his, I, you brought a very good point across where he finished all his trenches and he gets, he maximized everything and what he's going to do next. 
Elon being Elon, I know that he will move on to the to the, the next thing and continue innovating and stuff. People like them will continue doing it. I, I, I he'll do it if he could do it until 70, he'll do it until 70. Because if he stops doing it, I mean if you put yourself in his mind, life is pretty boring. He likes to feel excited for the future and he likes to make a difference. And that it was his thought process since the since since he was young. And I remember him saying like people thought he was weird. I mean, he thought he was weird. So uh, I, I know he'll just continue his innovation. I mean, if you are an entrepreneur yourself, you will continue working for the rest of your life, no matter what kind of targets you hit. So for Elon, uh, I see him moving away and that's a very, very good point across so that he can do the Larry uh, Edison move and he becomes chairman. You know, how bad can Tesla ever be from now on? So that's fine. Uh, and when he, the moment he does that, he actually, there's a lot of, he creates a lot of space, I mean, uh, brain space available to continue doing other things. Uh, I think that's a good move. Uh, again, five, 10 years into a holding company. Yeah, I mean, as long as he brings that company to that stage, you know, like the Google stage, the the Apple stage, you know, where everything is kind of like, like you know, there's, there's always this, this, uh, this S-curve graph for any companies if they make it all the way up there. But if they make it all the way up, it looks like an S-curve. So the moment Tesla reach up there, fine. You know, he can do anything he wants. I don't care if he steps down. I do not care. Uh, at that point of time, it's very hard to bring a company like that down because the culture is so ingrained into the company. It's pretty hard to change it from, from the very first place. You look at GE, it took, it took so many years to kill off the company. Mm. Uh, and let's say, for example, the rest of things that Elon wants to do. Again, I would still propose the your method of holding company, but... The, the difference is that he can still remain CEO as all those companies underneath it, like, like Berkshire. And all these CEOs just need to report to one person. And that, again, will free up his mind a lot. So this is, rather than him being the CEO of this holding company you have, or I don't know, I, I'm not really sure how the structure is for this holding company, but I foresee that if Elon wants more stress, he can put himself as a CEO and, leave, and answer to the public again. But I don't see that happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I was yeah. thinking about the structure a bit and um, you talk about Berkshire and when I look at Berkshire, what's really fascinating about Berkshire is <clears throat> is Warren Buffett has the holding company of Berkshire, like his office is so lean. Like over the yeah. over the years, he's like, yeah, we just have a few dozen people, that's it. And, and he doesn't like complexity. You know, he runs this crazy empire of businesses, but <clears throat> it's just like him and, and Charlie, right? And few others and when i look at that what i see about a holding company is is the advantage is elon can in fact like like some people might say there's a lot of bureaucracy or added complexity but in my opinion it kind of like simplifies things because it's elon's companies it's like he's like he's running the shots with Tesla. He's running the shots with, yeah. with, with SpaceX, with Neuralink, with Boring Company. Everyone reports to him anyways. And so yes. Yes. in a sense, like a holding company is very simple in structure. All it is is, it's just going to be Elon. He's going to be the yeah. one who makes all the decisions. And there'll be yeah. he'll have a couple dozen people running like the finances and the communicating between companies. But each company will have its own kind of operations, right? Like you're saying, like a, yes. like a CEO or someone. Um, but Elon will, will be able to tell the CEO what needs to get, like what has to happen. Like he can push the CEO and say, you know, we, you need to push harder. We, we need to go faster. We, and, and that, and we need to have this type of, more ambitious goals or better product. Mm. And if the CEO doesn't meet the standard, Elon quickly replaces that CEO with a, with, a, with a better person. And I think that type of role that Elon has, I don't know where you can find that anywhere else. Like, I think he's one of the best at being able to yes. push someone or team or whoever and then replace them with someone better if they can't get it, get it done. And so in some ways, I think like a holding company, like Elon would be perfect for it because it's his it's a structure where he can control the the people running you know the companies and still have a vision and and a say in their strategy and products without having the full responsibility of running each company right and that's where yeah. i'm like you know tesla like as as we're talking about 
who knows, at a certain point, Elon will move on, you know, because mm -hmm. that's what he does. He's a, he's, yeah. his DNA, his, his, his spirit is he's an innovator. He, once he starts something and if it's, he, they don't need him anymore, he'll move on. But my, my whole thing yeah. is why do we want Elon to move on to a different company and other companies when, if he would rather just combine all of his companies together, like if he wants it, right? If, if he wants to, to combine all of his companies and he thinks yeah. he could do a better job running all of them and create more, then I'm like, it sounds like a great, great deal for me. Let's do it. Right. Like, I don't know. What are your yes. thoughts with that? Yeah. I, I mean, perfect. I, I like the idea behind it. I just do not like the idea that is happening. Uh, let's say he chooses to do it within at least the next two to three years. It, it's a no go. The, the, uh, as I said, the, the reason is still the same from starting. I know a lot of people and Elon knows a lot of people who put their life savings into Tesla. And I know for certain that's going to stun growth. I mean, for many reasons, corporate structure and everything, all the cons that comes with it. So to me, only when he reaches his all his trenches, go ahead and do anything he wants. I'm totally for your idea, but not now. I mean, I mean for now, what are the most important things that I think is important for Elon is uh, number one, to free up his mind. And Tesla, uh, I, I, yeah, he did mention that he's stuck. Yeah, he did mention that he has nothing to do about it. And I don't think we can do anything to help him, but probably yeah. plan for what happens down, down the road. So for Tesla, we need to leave it as it is. Uh, that, that he said the ship has still, he said it multiple times. It's, it's quite funny. He even said it like, uh, he even called for Tesla stock price is too high five times. If I'm not wrong, five or six times it happens really. It's quite funny. Uh, I think lately with the one in Germany, he, I think that was seven times he said it. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually keep, uh, keeping count. Yeah. So, I mean, regarding that, since the ship is sailed, so how do we solve for his current things that we could solve for? So the things we could solve for is maybe a holding company. And like I like your plan where a holding company where he stays the board, and, I mean, he stays at the top and he can fire CEOs. Or he could have someone at the top and he runs his CEO role at the bottom because it's very hard to find three or four good CEOs to run your stuff. I mean, that that is, to me, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to find a good CEO. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is, what's interesting is Tesla, yeah. in my opinion, is already kind of like a holding company where, you know, yeah. there's many CEOs of these different huge kind of sub companies like full self driving or batteries or factories or manufacturing or solar, you know, all these, you know, companies are within a company. So Elon, I think already knows how to manage CEOs, you know, and I think yeah. if it's under a holding company, it just is the same thing. He's just managing more CEOs and he knows how to do that very, very well. It's just, so one of my concerns is this is in the next two years, um, there's, or next year or two, SpaceX has some funding needs. And um, because of that, there's, I think, some availability or some openness possibly to this holding company idea. Because, like, rather than, for example, Elon getting diluted from, let's say, SpaceX over the next few years because of different funding needs. Um, after a few years, Starlink will be fully, I mean, Starlink is going to be up and running this spring, actually. And it's going to take about a year or two for revenue to really get, get going. But after two or three years, I don't think SpaceX will really need any more funding. Like the need is going to be gone. Like Starlink, they're going to IPO Starlink. Starlink is going to be a cash cow and Star yes. and SpaceX will have a ton of money. And I, at that point, I don't think Elon would really feel like a merger or a holding company would make sense because he's like, forget it. I'm just going to do SpaceX from now on because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's a private company. It's simpler. I don't have to deal with, you know, the whole public aspect and we have a lot of money now with Starlink and we're just going to do our thing. And I think he might just leave Tesla at that point because that's the simpler thing to do. And so mm. I, I personally think the holding company idea is just a limited window opportunity personally, while there's a need in SpaceX over the next two or three years for funding, et cetera. And Starlink hasn't got off the ground. There's just a limited mm -hmm. window. And after that window, 
I, I think it's over. I think Elon shifts out of Tesla. I don't know exactly when, but at a certain point, he shifts out of Tesla into SpaceX. SpaceX has, you know, Starlink IPO, has a ton of cash and is funded. Yes. And Elon is moving on with, with SpaceX and Neuralink. And Tesla shareholders, I'm not that bullish post Elon period. Like, sure, it could be like a Tim Cook, you know, maybe where he, they, they find a great CEO who manages well, but in terms of innovation, who can innovate like Elon, you know? Like, exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be a different company the, 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 after the, Elon leaves. Yeah. Yes, the, the, the thing with Tesla, I, I agree with you, but uh, okay, so I see the Larry Edison playbook happening. So it becomes a chair. I don't think he will shift out totally. Uh, if you look at Bill Gates, he didn't ship out totally for many years and instead he did the foundation thing. And Elon could do the, the same thing like Bill Gates. In, but the funny thing with the foundation, you know, Bill Gates, he started this whole charity thing and although his money is supposed to be giving away, his wealth actually increased like double or triple. So Elon could do the same playbook. It, I don't think you ever shift away. This, this is at least from my opinion. Okay, I, I started a few business just, just to share with you a bit of my experience. Yes. Is once it becomes successful, shit, you are a slave to the company. How are you going to get rid of it? There is no way. I, I cannot think of a way to get rid of it. After you set up a successful company, you get rid of it because you're just, just going to wipe stuff out. Uh, and it holds so much emotional, I will call that, as, at my stage now, I'll call it emotional trauma. You, you become a slave. So I think Elon, he, he understands that, uh, hopefully. Uh, I, I will see him like, doing the Bill Gates, Larry, or Edison thing, like he would just hold a chairman and just let Tesla run. I mean, after fulfilling so many things and he has hit the top already, I don't think innovation is really that, that important. It's still important, but it's not extremely important. You know, you are ruling the whole, everybody is driving in robot taxis. Everybody is using electric car. Not much other innovations Tesla needs. So that's the point where I see it let it run on its own or shift the holding company is fine. The stock is not going to drop. In fact, I would see more funds bumping to Tesla because, you know, most people are very, I will, I will always call that the fund managers are still humans. Uh, and humans, they are always seeking this thing called certainty. And that, that is just fundamentally human. So when Tesla becomes a very certain company, more funds will be going in. So that, personally, to me, is even better for Tesla. At that point of time, it's not for me, but the, re the reason why I have my money is there is because Elon, you know, that's it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Regarding the rest of his companies, like you were mentioning Starlink and SpaceX, so, so correct me if I'm wrong, SpaceX is the top, uh, branches out is Starlink, and because he still wants to remain 100% control, I mean, he still wants to remain majority control of SpaceX. So he branches out Starlink and he IPOs his company, a spin-off and he gets a lot of money from this to do his things that he want to do at SpaceX, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, I mean, uh, it's probably going to be like a gradual sharing, selling of shares. So, so SpaceX will, the employees will own, you know, some, but SpaceX, a company will own and Elon will own some, but they'll start to, to, and the SpaceX, a company will own part of Starlink. So every year they'll sell a percent of Starlink to raise I money see. and it'll last a long time, basically. Yeah. I funding. See. Yeah. And the, I think that is perfect. I mean, he could uh, do that. Uh, I mean, he, his plan, I think he will still follow what he said on Twitter where he will prioritize retail investors for Starlink. I think it's going to happen. Um, so regarding that, uh, the only problem, I, the only thing he needs now is hell of a lot of money because whatever he wants to do with SpaceX, a lot of money is needed. So uh, spinning off Starlink is a good idea. Mm, starting up a company like I think to get massive amount of money if you go in if you, you do the uh, ch the ch Chamber playbook the S SPACs which I'm not a big fan of you can do that on Starlink you can do that on Boring Company and Neuralink I assure you he's going to get a lot of money yeah but I don't think he's going down that route yeah so if he wants capital it's pretty easy to help the retail investors just that I believe he's looking out for them I, he has a team I, I, I've spoken to some insider people. I, I cannot mention who is it, but they are aware of retail investors. They are, they are careful too. They, they do not want to go down that Tesla route initially. Uh, yeah, they, 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 do, they do care. 
I'm this this uncertain. They are looking out for people. So um, they were. I believe whatever decisions they make, they will try to make it. Uh, they do not want to see what's happening to Tesla and happen to boring company Neuralink again. Yeah, imagine somebody's brain exploded. Uh, wow, I, I it's, it's going to have a massive pushback again. And Neuralink is going to disrupt the amount of companies. <laughs> Neuralink is going to disrupt. It's going to be Tesla Playbook 2.0. So I'm pretty sure they, they have have all this thought process in and if they want to raise capital, it is very easy for them. And if he needs money, that's the way to go, you know, spin off a uh, home holding company, spin off IPO, and they, they're going to get a lot of money coming in. I assure you for that. I mean, that, that I'm certain. But as a holding company to grow exponentially, to get a lot of money, that is difficult. I mean, this is purely talking from a money perspective. But where I want to come from is, Frankly, I, I don't give a crap about money for myself, but I do care for other retail investors and I also do care for Elon's brain because I think Elon's happiness, I think I would rather prioritize Elon's happiness. Uh, and I know that if he doesn't need to answer the public, that's the best way. And that's through setting up like your idea of a holding company, but he remains CEO of all these companies below it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't... And his holding company, he doesn't even need to answer to public because he gets someone in the holding company to talk to the public. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. it, man. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Like, no, I mean, the thing is, like, when I think about holding company, and I think about, like, what would be the best for Tesla and what would be the best for Elon? Yes. And also the world through what Elon can do. And when I look at it just through Tesla's angle, like, for example, you bring up Larry Ellison and Bill Gates, but the thing is, once they dropped CEO role, like the, the companies were never the same. You know, Bill Gates I agree. just, I, agree. I mean, you had Steve Ballmer come in, destroy, basically oh. almost destroy the company. I mean, <laughs> it's just once you drop the CEO, even if you're chairman, you know, Bill Gates was chairman for a long time. It's like you can't yeah, do yeah. much, you know? So I Elon agree. is chairman. He's not going to be able to do much. It's going to go downhill in some ways. I mean, it might go. Like the sales might be stable, the valuation might increase a lot because, as you say, certainty that's the thing people want. So, just like Apple, yeah, yeah. like people might love the stock and it can go a lot higher. But in terms of yeah. true innovation, like without Elon or someone at his caliber, Tesla is going to be a very different company. And so, when I look at like Tesla, just look at Tesla's sake, like I, I look at the future beyond cars, beyond robot taxi, beyond energy. Like there's some big fields that I think will only happen if Elon is CEO for the next like 10 or 15 years, not just the next five years. Like, for example, one is a uh, robots, like humanoid robots, um, mm. because with robots, the two biggest areas of innovation are is actually autonomous kind of walking and maneuvering. So with visual mm-hmm. and that's really te- yes. what Tesla's working on. The second is a lot of it is, is like motors and like, coordination and all that. Um, yes. But the humanoid market, it could be extremely, extremely large. Because if you think about autonomous humanoid, it doesn't even have to look like a human, say, but just autonomous helper robots doing like so many things, farming, cleaning, working, etc. And it's, it's really right the next thing Tesla can do after cars yes. in five or 10 years. Um, will they really be able to do it with, if Elon's not CEO, you know, like that's a big question mark. Mm-hmm. Another big thing is like, um, is drones, like they need to have the, the last foot delivery. Let's say you have the last mile delivery with the robot taxis, but you need to take the package to the person at the front door. So you, mm-hmm. it's, maybe it's not drones, maybe it's robots, but they need some amazing innovation to take the package from the robo taxi to the front door of a person's mm-hmm. car and mm-hmm. without elon ah, it's gonna be tough and the other I other agree. yeah the other um area um is vertical takeoff and landing jet oh and, <laughs> yeah and if elon steps down as ceo over the next you know three four years or and if he leaves after he re- reaches all of his you know stock options I, like Tesla can't do a vertical takeoff and landing jet without Elon. Elon needs to be part of it. He needs Elon. to run it, you know, to make it happen. But that's the difference. If you have a holding company, you lock in Elon, you lock in Tesla's future with Elon. Tesla grows beyond robotaxis into 
you know, autonomous robots into vertical takeoff landing jet. They could go into um, um, sustainable housing, like real, like set up entire houses, like within a week and really build out a crazy, you know, like the, the future, the future is unlimited if Elon can stay intimately involved, like really controlling the direction. But my yes. concern is, is this mo most likely won't happen. You know, my yes. concern is most likely Elon will move on after the stock options focus on, t on SpaceX and Neuralink. Um, and I don't think it's the best um, thing for Tesla um, going forward. I, my, my I do. Okay. Well, I, sorry. I, well, I do agree with you on the, on the, the okay, I'll cover the human robots later. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a good, great idea for Elon. <laughs> so I, I, I thought of this many years ago. I just couldn't Im implement it myself. Um, uh, if he steps down, I do agree with you that uh, if he's not CEO role, this all this may not happen. But uh, I would push back on this because he may give his idea to other people to do it. So he's like, you know, look, vertical takeoff jet. I mean, he may not be really bullish on that. Uh, I mean, he may not go full force on that. It depends on maybe he has completed SpaceX. Maybe by, by the time Starship could land and go up and down, he's like, okay, so what am I, I going to do next? So he'll probably go into human robots. I guess probably the last mile delivery. I hundred percent agree with you with that. But if it's not a CEO, it's difficult. So uh, I'm 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 actually reviewing on that. So retaining CEO role is really important. But, but again, again, I'm trying to think of you know how to maximize Elon's happiness. Yeah. <laughs> on that. How how do we? You know, he's already done so much good for the world. I, at least you know enjoy life a bit and maximize happiness. Um, still having a still thinking about it. Uh, your idea is one of it. Like you could move it the holding company again, just deal less with the public. That could be one portion. But again, like I said, not not now. Uh, probably like I said. Uh, by the time you say that he complete all his trenches, moving the holding company, I'm all good with your idea. I follow your idea. Yeah. Right. Regarding the the human robots idea, you know, I have a very big. Uh, there's a very big market to go for. I mean, you look at its traffic lights all over the world. They are just dumb. Red, red, uh, green, red, green, that kind of stuff. So imagine you create a robot that could be, and it's needed all around the world in third world countries and first world countries where you could smart traffic lights. And so instead of uh, like traffic light permanently plant there, you could have like, let's say for example, if this, this is the first stage, the first stage, if traffic light breaks down, you you send a robot there and stand them stand right in the middle of the junction and you direct traffic. Future stages could be many of these robots line up so they can actually can interface with one another to see that where the traffic is coming from and they can optimize traffic flow. Probably that's the next stage. And it's a very big market and you, and you do solve a lot of problems because let's say if you go to Thailand or India, you, you see traffic policemen standing in the middle of the road and you, and you see your life like get wasted away from all the carbon monoxide and stuff. So I think this is one problem that Tesla could solve. Uh, if Elon is not there, probably it's harder, but is it Difficult problem to solve. I don't think it's a difficult problem. We see Boston Dynamics doing such problem solving. And yeah, probably they go buy Tesla's battery technology. So, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. With Boston <laughs> Dynamics, they're like, in my, I've done some some looking into them and they don't have much. They, ha they have nice videos, but they don't have yeah. really much tech. Like, they're, it's overhyped. They, that's why they keep on selling themselves to other companies you know, because they don't really have like really anything substantial in my opinion when I look at them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I think um, one issue you bring up is kind of the short-term stock price, you know, and, and retail yeah. shareholders. Um, yeah. Now, the way I look at it is to twofold. One is I am sympathetic to that idea that perhaps there will be people in, who didn't sign up for a holding company when they bought Tesla stock. So they won't be happy, let's say with, you know, this holding company holding SpaceX or, you know, Neuralink, et cetera. Um, I think though, a lot of those concerns might be satisfied by two things. One is it depends on what valuation is given to SpaceX and Starlink together. Like for example, if, if it joins the holding company at a $200 billion valuation, that's different than if it joins the holding company at a $60, $60 billion valuation. Like at a $60 billion valuation, it's like, hey, that's pretty cheap. Why wouldn't you give 10% of Tesla 
for SpaceX yes. and you know Starlink. And just one yes. more percent, you get Neuralink it too. It's like eleven percent, you get all these extra companies. Like it's a, it's kind of a no brainer in my opinion, right? Um, yes, yes. If it's pricier, if it's two hundred billion or three hundred billion, and you have to pay like fifty percent of the company for SpaceX, now it's like a bigger problem, right? It's like how can we yes. justify this dilution or or spending a lot? So, a lot of it is like how you value um, SpaceX, and that deter that's a lot of it is determined on Elon because he's the he's the majority shareholder of SpaceX, so he can determine the valuation he puts in for SpaceX mm -hmm. into the holding company. So mm -hmm. he could take a discount if he chooses to, or, you know, or do higher. Um, th the second thing is, I think when investors start to understand, and I think when Elon and SpaceX start to share more about Starlink's revenue model and their growth, and they start to kind of do projections. Like for example, they, they had a leak about Three year, two or three years ago that went out to Bloomberg and it showed that SpaceX had internal documents that showed that they were going to get um, something like $25 billion of net income of Starlink by the year 2025. Now, I think that's a, a few years too early, but if you think about $25 billion of net income, get, times that by 50, 50 P, uh, uh, 50 POV multiple, we're talking about over a trillion dollar. Trillion. Yeah. Yes. You know, this is like, yeah. and the thing is, Star SpaceX is very secretive about that, this stuff. Um, yeah. But if SpaceX and Elon was to openly share, hey, here's our revenue model, here are our expectations. And if you follow that, it's pretty obvious, actually, Starlink is amazingly undervalued. Um, and I think there's something about stuff like that where, um, I think, sure, there could be a slight short-term hit because you know of the drama or the confusion or the unhappiness of some shareholders, but, and I don't know how much that would be. You know, you know, maybe it would be ten percent, maybe twenty percent, maybe it would be forty percent. I don't know, um, but if you think about it more, like two or three years down the road, I personally think it's just a a blip because. You have Tesla growth, you have RoboTaxi growth, you have Starlink growth. It's going to all come back and it'll even be more. So if you could just hold on for two years, you know, you will be massively yeah. rewarded. You just need to take a small dip. And right now at $650 billion, I don't know, my, in my opinion, I think over the next six months, we have a pretty high likelihood of having some type of natural dip anyways, you know, from macro or something. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm for me, if it was like, over the next five or 10 years, we're going to have this massive suppression of Tesla stock price. Then I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's messed up. You know, I don't want that. No one wants that. But if it's just like, you know, a, a blip, like six to 12 months, you know, and we, we work out of it. I'm like, that's not bad yes. for me. What do you think? Actually, I agree hundred percent what you just said. It, word for word, I agree. The biggest problem is no, not a lot of people think like that. In fact, uh, I, you give me you once you have a percentage behind it, probably ten percent people think like uh, like us, like you, and nine percent don't think that way. You know, you know the percentage yourself, and that's not good. You you, you know, so um, good idea. Uh, sometimes like uh, like sometimes when I certain certain things I want to speak on my channel, I I tend to simplify massively because not not a lot of people can grasp the I mean grasp the what we are trying to say. And the idea behind it, it, it takes a while to sink in. So I'm 100% with you, with your idea, just that implementing it may not sound like a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. like I was getting so much pushback over this on Twitter. Like, <laughs> man, I had so much like, just, I don't know what about it, but it seems like sometimes people on Twitter and elsewhere, they feel like if, if like they can attack you as a person, you know, like I have no yeah. problem with, with talking about the idea. Like, I don't mind if people thrash my idea, say this is the worst idea in the world. That's fine. But then you have <laughs> people who get emotional and they, they attack me as a person. Right. I'm like, what did I do? I just like sharing an idea. But anyways, when I get yeah. all this, this, this feedback, and also I did a, a Twitter poll and it's about half, half, half people liked the idea of a holding company, yeah. half people didn't. And there's so much emotion and also extreme di divisiveness. 
Mm. I started to think, yeah, maybe Elon is will be happier with private companies. You know, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe the 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 noise of public kind of companies, like because everyone, every shareholder feels like they're a part owner of this company, which they are, and yes. it brings an immense yes. amount of just like spotlight and complexity. And when I got all the pushback, I'm like, and all the just reactions, I started to think, hmm, you know, maybe, maybe <laughs> there's something about being private, you know, that that Elon might enjoy more. So, yeah. The I actually so there's two times. I mean, there's I I've been into this world. Uh, I have been both sides of the world. Uh, having coming from raising, I I you asked me to go the whole stage from raising capital to bring the company IPO. I I personally know how to do that. So I I know what's the okay. So to Make it very simple. A private company, the advantages is that it is massively easy to to run. I mean, whatever you say goes. Um, you may not be even the boss. You may be the second or third person. They, as long as you have a good working relationship, anything goes. But in a public company, my God. So, but the difference between a public company is that you get very high evaluations, and so is you're 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 trying to balance now whether if you want to have your brain space or you balance, I mean, you're balancing whether you need the money to achieve the mission that you need to achieve. So it's a very, uh, you, you, you need to balance out. So Elon needs to think for himself whether money is important to achieve the mission or his brain space is more important to, to do what he likes to do. So that it becomes a very, uh, this balancing point is where, I, I find it's quite good where Tesla now is private. So at least he has one that is, that uh, so it, Tesla is public as, as one that's public to get the money in, to get exposure he needs to get. And the other one remains private because he doesn't need to answer to the world. So his current structure is good for now, but I hear you, I agree with you that uh, in a few years time, holding company for Tesla, probably for Elon's sake, I'm I'm going with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. My... Because like, as you're saying, answering to the world, like as a private company, you don't need to answer to the world. Like you just do your yeah. own thing. But as a public company, you have so many shareholders. Like if you do yeah. something and one shareholder is upset, <laughs> right? They're just like going to go at you. They're going to rile up, you know, all these people against you. And you're like, what do we do? You know, it's like there's so much yeah. complexity with being a public company. Um, yeah. And I see that that's that's definitely a con. And I'm sure like that's the thing, like what, like I'm sure Elon knows what to do and, you know, he will make his own decisions, obviously. And the most likely is he's going to just keep what is current because there's a reason why Tesla is public and SpaceX is private and, you know, that's been the plan. Yeah. And so, um, but I think in some ways just talking it out and yeah. sharing different ideas. Um, it's helpful because we're all co-owners of the company. And I think this stuff also is intriguing. Like I'm always focused on five or 10 years out. So like so yes. many people are so focused on like today or next year or stock price. My focus is always like, like what is Tesla gonna look like 2030 to 2040, you know? And yes. how can I get excited about that? But when the stock price has run up and market cap has gone up to $650 billion or almost there, and now Elon is three years away from, let's say, cashing out his stock options, now mm. the 2030 to 2040 starts to look a little bit blurry. I mean, it could still be a great company, obviously, like Apple or something, but in terms of Elon Musk type of innovation, it's like it's, it's starting to... Actually, I was more oh, bullish yes. on 2030, 2040 when Tesla stock price was lower, you know, at like 100 billion, because that shows that we have yeah. Elon Musk for a lot longer time. But the higher yes. Tesla stock price goes, it means that we might have Elon Musk for a shorter time. So it, it changes things. Yeah. Actually, I, 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 I forgot to add one more thing. It, it's highly possible, let's say, for example, Elon does his Starship, he's done with it. Uh, uh, Tesla has achieved what they need to achieve. It's highly possible that uh, Tesla could set up a CEO reward trench too. Mm -hmm. It's possible the the next stage. So they complete the first trench. He is he has done everything he needs to do. Um, then they create another CEO reward. It is highly possible that could happen, and I foresee that happening more than 
then uh, I, I mean, there's a high possibility that will happen because Elon will always do the Elon thing. Yeah. Bit, and uh-huh. he, he can't sit still. That's true. I mean, if that's it, yeah, if you do give him enough incentive, because the money doesn't mean much to him in and of itself, it only means something if he could fulfill, use it toward a, something else, like for example, yes. Mars, right? So, yeah, if you give him maybe a 2028 or new compensation plan to take Tesla yeah. from you know one trillion to five trillion or ten trillion dollars. You know, and you give them yeah, yeah. a big chunk of that. Definitely, that could be an option. I definitely see that. Yeah. Yes. So that's that's another option. Yeah. To yeah. continue innovating. I mean, we do not. Uh, the chances of that happening is a lot higher because you know Elon by nature is quite innovative. Mm-hmm. So um, I w- even at that point of time, I will still not bet against Tesla as long mm-hmm. Elon is around. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm always you know. Personally, I mean, I mean, having having this whole conversation, if you had asked me to choose between Elon's help and the money, it's always Elon's help. So I don't really care what happens. But the, the, the thing is, if he does certain things like to piss off shareholders, it's going to affect his health quite badly. So I think he needs to decide uh, like what is the best balance between both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Ken, I want to thank you for the great discussion. It's always a, a pleasure to, to chat with you. Um, I've learned a lot and yeah, just appreciate your time. Thank you. I also learned a lot from your thoughts and uh, always, it's always good chatting, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll right. do it again. All right. Take care. Have All a right. happy new year. Take care, take appreciate care. it. Happy new year. Happy okay. new year. Take care.